Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY. Thank you so much for joining me today on my channel where I love to bring you the best tips and tools for creating beautiful home decor on a budget. Today I am here with six quick and easy fall home decor projects that I think would be great for a fall craft sale or for gift giving or for decorating your home. But these were ones using mostly Dollar Tree items and then upscaling them that you could then sell them in a craft show. So with all that being said, let's get crafting. For today's first DIY, we're going to be using some of these standing pumpkin MDF decor from Dollar Tree and then some scrapbook paper and some other decorative items to, like I said, upscale them. So the base of this surface is great for um, decorating. I'm just removing these raffia bows that are on there. We're actually going to use those on another project in this video. And then I just scrape off as much as the glitter as I can and then I did sand these. Now you probably don't need to do um, a pretty solid layer of paint if you're going to be putting scrap of paper on these, but I did want it to be level. So I took my Waverly chalk paint in the color pumpkin and I did give each of my three pumpkins one good coat on the front, the back, and the sides. Next, measuring the front of my pumpkin it was about three and a half by five and a half inches. I went to my scrapbook paper stash from Hobby Lobby and I picked out three that to me were more kind of Halloween colors and I cut a piece of each of those. And then for the other side of each pumpkin, I'm going to do more of a general fall uh, paper for color schemes. So I, you guys know I love making projects that can stay out for longer periods of time. So I thought, why not decorate both the front and the back and make these dual purpose? Once we have all of our paper cut, we will use some matte finish Mod Podge and we will apply these to the two different sides of our pumpkins. Now that we have our paper cut and our pumpkins are dry, just a light, thin layer of matte finish Mod Podge on the front side of the pumpkin. And then I will spritz a little bit of water on the back of my scrapbook paper, line it up at the bottom of the pumpkin and just smooth it down really well. I did make sure to go around the edges because we don't want our paper to peel up. So apply your one side to all three pumpkins. We'll let that dry and then we'll come back with our little sander to clean up the edges. Now that that first side scrapbook paper is dry, in a downward motion using our little um, hand sander, finger sander, whatever it's called, this thing is great. It just helps clean up the edges of the scrapbook paper and give you a nice uh, clean edge. I do like the slightly distressed look that it leaves also. This sander is in my Amazon storefront, which is linked in the description box below. Once we've cleaned up the one side with the sander, we're just gonna do the exact same thing on the other side of each pumpkin using our Halloween paper. And just like on the other side, we'll take our little sander now once the paper's dry and clean up those edges again so that we now have our surface recovered and we can decorate it how we would like. 
To finish off our pumpkins, I just took some ribbons from my stash. Some I just tied in knots around the stem. Others you'll see I will do like a little bow. But just have fun with this and just use what you have. Decorate your two different sides and then you will have a product ready to sell in your craft show. Now for these, since the pumpkins are $1.25 and then I am using a little bit of ribbon, I don't know, off the top of my head, I would probably mark these about $6 a piece. So here's the fall side of our pumpkins. You can see I used some jute twine, some ribbon just tied in a knot, and then also one in a bow. And then flipping around to the Halloween side, you can see I used a bow on this one, a bow of a Halloween ribbon on this one, and then some long ribbons hanging down. If you're stopping by my channel for the first time today, welcome. I'm so glad that you found me. I sure hope you'll like what you see and consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button. To all of my returning viewers and subscribers, thank you so much for your continued support of my channel. I just simply couldn't do this without you. You make it so much fun. I hope everyone will be sure to check the notification bell. So click that bell and make sure your notifications are set to all. So YouTube should let you know each time I upload a new video. For DIY number two, we're gonna take some of these paper mache round lidded boxes from Dollar Tree and turn them into three cute little pumpkins. So we're just gonna use some scrapbook paper, some pieces of a wooden dowel, and our Waverly chalk paint in the color pumpkin. So these are really good quality boxes and I thought they would make super cute little pumpkin decor just to sit on a shelf or you can even use them as a little treat box to give a gift to someone. So we're gonna give each of our boxes and each of our lids just on the outside, a coat of our Waverly chalk paint in pumpkin, and then we will let that dry completely. Once that was dry, I did take um, some scrapbook paper and something a little bit smaller of a circle, traced some, uh, plaid fall paper. I'm gonna do all three of these pumpkins just slightly differently so you can get a few different ideas. So you can put some scrap of paper on the top there. Before I put anything on the boxes, I did take my sander again and just kind of scuffed up the paint job to give it a little bit more of a rustic look. Of course, this is completely optional. Then taking a little bit of Mod Podge, just putting it on the back of my scrap paper uh, circle. Gonna stick that right down on the center of the lid. And then once that is dry and in place, we will do Mod Podge over the entire lid to keep the paper down and to also make sure our paint does not chip off. You can see on the front of this same box, I used a little calendar image from a Dollar Tree calendar. If you don't have that, you can certainly find things online that you can download and print. So even the box parts that did not have anything uh, decoupaged on them, I did do a layer of Mod Podge, like I said, just to give everything a nice finished look. For the stems of my pumpkins, I just took a wooden dowel that I had in my stash and cut three little pieces. If you don't have something like this, you could use the mini wood blocks from Dollar Tree or even one or two tumbling tower blocks for your stems. I'm just gonna give these a coat of truffle Waverly chalk paint and then once those are dry, we'll glue them on to the tops of our pumpkins. Here you can see the three different ways I decorated the boxes. One is plain, one just has the paper on the top with the little calendar image, and then the other one has paper 
circle on the top and just a little bit around the edge of the lid. So just glue those stems down and then here's those raffia bows I took off of the pumpkins in the first project. Then I'm just gonna tuck in some little leaves from um, some floral that I have. Uh, we'll use maybe one of the Dollar Tree uh, sunflowers here in a second you'll see but you can just really use what you have if you don't have the raffia you could use jute twine to make little bows I just thought these were super cute and probably I will mark these five dollars a piece DIY number three is super simple. You're gonna to wanna to grab two of these wood crates from Dollar Tree. Make sure that they are the exact same size and shape if possible. And then we have some other decorative items. So first I'm gonna give both my crates just on the outside a layer of Waverly chalk paint in the color pumpkin. Of course, you can use any orange acrylic paint that you have, mix a color, whatever you'd like. I'm not going to worry about painting the inside because no one is going to see the inside. <laughs> Once they're done, I did sand them a tiny bit and then I'm just using my tight bond wood glue along the edges of one of them to sandwich these two crates together to create our little box that we are going to turn into a pumpkin. Once it is dry, you can see I sand it a little bit more to distress it and then for even more distressing if you'd like, I'm using the Truffle Waverly Chalk Paint, just kind of brushing it very lightly on all the edges just to give it some more character. If you end up getting too much on, you can then take your sander again and lighten up those areas that you were a little heavy handed. <laughs> Next, to cover up the holes on the top and the bottom of our pumpkin, I'm just taking this really pretty fall ribbon from Dollar Tree and carefully laying it as straight and as flat as I can, and then just putting a little bead of hot glue to hold it at each of the corners. This will give some more color and texture to our pumpkin, and like I said, we'll also cover up the holes that were in the two different sides of the crate. Again, another option for a pumpkin stem is a spool. I chose to leave mine the natural color, but of course you could always paint it if you'd like. Next, I'm going to take some raffia strands and just tie them in a double knot around the stem and then just kind of have them be going crazy. This is a little bit more of a rustic um, way to finish it off, but just wanted to give you lots of different ideas. Tie that in a knot, kind of fluff it however they're gonna go, and then of course you can trim those up. I also wanted to use some of the beaded garland that Dollar Tree has been carrying. I decided to go with the red and orange one and just kind of wrap it and twist it around the stem. However, I also noticed that it was really hard to kind of keep in place. So once I get as much on there as I want, I'm actually going to remove the raffia that I tied and I'm gonna move it up above the beaded garland so that it kind of holds it down better.
And another optional touch is to just add in some of this Spanish moss from Dollar Tree. Just take a small clump and kind of place it where you want it. And then just put a tiny bit of hot glue underneath to hold it in place. If you love budget home decor DIY videos like this, please consider giving this video a thumbs up as that lets YouTube know people are enjoying my content and then they will show it to more and more viewers. For DIY number four, we're gonna give a makeover to some of these mason jar shelf sitters from Dollar Tree using some scrapbook paper, some jute twine, and some of these sunflowers from Dollar Tree as well as some greenery. So these are really great surfaces. I love that it has the actual galvanized metal at the top. I just removed the twine and then the paper image that's on the front. Scrape off as much as you can, but then I did use my sander as well. We'll also take off those galvanized metal pieces and then put them back on in just a little bit. So I'm going to leave the front side plain, but I am going to give the back and all the edges of my mason jar signs a good coat of my Waverly chalk paint in the color ink. We're just gonna make both of these uh, mason jar signs pretty close to each other, but we wanna start with the black base. Then I did take some Hobby Lobby black and white gingham paper and cut a piece small enough that it will fit the front. And just like with the pumpkins, we're just gonna do a late layer of Mod Podge, spritz some water on the back of our scrapbook paper and rub that down, apply it down really well. Again, just like with the pumpkins, once that scrapbook paper is dry, we'll use our little sander and in a downward motion, sand that scrapbook paper edging off and get a nice clean edge as well as a little bit of a sanded rustic edge. I'm choosing to add some of these wood words from Dollar Tree to the front of my jars. If you don't have these, you could always use black stickers or cut a word from vinyl as well. I know that Hobby Lobby also has some wood sticker words. That is another option. I'm just coloring them in with a black Sharpie. It's just a little bit uh, cleaner than trying to use a paintbrush small enough to make it look not messy. <laughs> So now we're gonna design how we're gonna put the front of our jars. I'm going to use these words. And then, like I said, I'm also gonna use some of the Dollar Tree sunflowers that are on little um, wire stems. We're just gonna remove them from the wire stem to add them to the front of our jars along with some little pieces of greenery as well. Then once we have everything laid out how we want it, we'll start applying a little bits of hot glue to get everything onto the front of the jar. I'm gonna do these two very similar, but slightly different just for more interest. And then the last thing we'll do is we will add some jute twine back to the top of the jar between the scrapbook paper and the galvanized metal. The cat 
So once I tied some jute twine back where it originally was, cut a little knot, then I'm gonna make a couple of my little hand wrap easy jute twine bows, just wrap it around some fingers a few times, and then tie it in the center with another piece of twine, and then I'm gonna glue that right over the knot at the top of the jar. And here they are, just to give you two simple ideas. These I will probably mark $7 because they do have the added sunflowers and the greenery. For a list of all of the supplies I've used in today's projects, as well as some important links, please check the description box below the video title. You usually have to hit a down arrow and it will open that up for you. For DIY number five, we're gonna make a modification on some of these 3D wood pumpkin signs from Dollar Tree, also using some of the glass candlesticks and some pieces of wood. So I'm using Waverly chalk paint in plaster. I have these two wood blocks that I'm going to use to uh, mount the 3D pumpkin to. We're going to give them a good coat of that plaster and then paint also our glass candlesticks. Now these do take a little bit of time, probably would be a lot faster with a spray paint that would work on glass, but I am using what I have on hand. So I actually painted the candlestick, let it dry, and then sprayed it with a clear matte spray, the Rust-Oleum one that I use, and I did that three times. Because I am gonna be selling these, I wanted to make sure they looked really nice and finished and that the paint job was complete and you couldn't see any streaks or anything like that. Now coming to the pumpkins, we'll remove the raffia bows, of course, and the glue, and then the base of each pumpkin on this front side and also on the back, we're going to use our Waverly Antique Wax. So we'll brush that on in between the raised places. Don't worry if you get some on there because we'll be covering it with scrap of paper anyway. We're just going to brush this on the entire front and then wipe off the excess to get that beautiful stained wood look. And like I said, because we're selling these, we are gonna make it completely finished. So we'll do the antique wax on the back side of each of our pumpkins as well. So here's one coat of the paint. You can still see it's kind of streaky. So like I said, I'm gonna do this three times where I get a nice even as possible coat and then spray the clear mat. Now you've seen me do this before. I'm putting my scrapbook paper over the raised section and tracing it out using my fingernails to kind of make the indentation in the paper. And then once you flip that over, you've had a perfect tracing that you can then cut out to Mod Podge onto each section of the raised 3D pumpkin. So I'm gonna use three different papers on the front of the pumpkin this time, and I will make my two pumpkins look the same. Now 
Next, once we've got our paper cut out, we'll just apply a light layer of matte finish Mod Podge, not only on the raised unpainted section, but also the antique wax um, pumpkin sections around so that our finished pumpkin has an even finish. So everything will end up having Mod Podge on it. Spritz a little water on the back of your paper and just line that up and smooth it out like you've already seen me do a few times in this video. Now taking two of our candlesticks and this fix-all adhesive from Dollar Tree, we're going to glue two of these together at the tops. So putting some of the glue and then I'm placing the second candlestick right on top of the other one. You're gonna wanna let this sit for a good long while to dry. I also need four of my tumbling tower blocks to help my pumpkins be able to stand up. So we're gonna use that antique wax again and cover four of these blocks. Just brush it on and then kind of wipe it off in a paper towel works perfectly. Coming to our third candlestick now, this one is gonna be the shorter of our standing pumpkins. Put some more of that Fix All Adhesive around the top of it and then center that on one of the wood blocks that we painted. If you don't have these wood blocks, you could definitely use some from Dollar Tree or even the square or rectangular wood flats. This is my double candlestick now that I am gluing to the other wood block. For our pumpkins, I'm gonna attach a little bit of jute twine on the back with some hot glue, and I'm going to wrap it to completely cover the stem of the pumpkin. This is a fun way to add some more texture and be able to cover up that hole. Now, as you get close to the top, you're gonna to wanna to put a little bit of hot glue so that it keeps the jute twine from slipping off the end. And then once you get it covered as much as you want, just snip the jute twine and make sure to hot glue that end down. And I decided to use a little more jute twine and make two more of my finger wrapped jute twine bows. And we'll add those right under the stem where the raffia bows were originally. So that our pumpkins can stand, we're going to hot glue one tumbling tower block to the front of the pumpkin and one on the back. This is gonna give us more of a surface that we can then glue down to the block so that our pumpkins will be raised up on the glass candlesticks. So now just applying some hot glue on the bottom of the tumbling tower blocks, we can center our pumpkin on the top of our wood block, and now we have our stacked standing pumpkins. You can cover up the tumbling tower blocks with whatever you'd like. I'm just using some more of the Spanish moss that we used earlier in this video. And here they are finished. I'm not sure if I would sell these as a pair or individually. If I sold them as a pair, it would probably be at least $20 just because of the different items that were used and the amount of time they took to make.
If you are on Facebook, please head over to my Monarch Mom DIY Facebook page if you have not already. Like it, follow it. As soon as I hit 3,000 followers over there, I am going to do a prize drawing for a few lucky people who are following that page. DIY number six is another one that's super easy and would make cute little gifts. I have four of these wood crates with the jute twine hanger. These are square. And then I have some calendar images from jenniferpew.com. First thing I'm gonna do is remove the jute twine. You could definitely leave that on if you wanted. And I'm gonna give all four of my little crates a good coat of our antique wax on the inside and the outside. Of course, you could always paint these a color if you wanted to, but I really liked the look of this antique wax on the crates. So these are from jenniferpew.com. She was the artist a couple years ago for this calendar that went crazy at Dollar Tree. So if you don't have the calendar, you could always order these from her website. She mails them to you. I'll make sure to put the link in the description box. I decided to use these four images and I'm using two of each one because I'm going to Mod Podge it on the two solid ends of our crate and this also helps to cover up the hole where the jute twine hanger was. So just apply a little of the Mod Podge to the back of your image and press that down until it's nice and dry. We will do the same thing on the other side. And then I did go over the images with Mod Podge as well so that they didn't peel off. And it's as simple as that. You can use them decoratively like this, or you could even put little treats inside. I'll probably sell these for $4 a piece and maybe put a few candies inside as well. Thanks again so much for joining me today. Please let me know in the comments which of these projects was your favorite, maybe which ones you might make for a fall craft show, and we'll see you next time. Take care.